Welcome to Lee. Welcome to Legal Tender, and if you own a shotgun, get it out, because you may need to take out your neighbor's drone. And there have been a couple of people who've gotten a little miffed at their neighbors about drones flying over top of their house, and have taken matters into their own hands, and we're going to discuss whether it's legal for you to do that, right. or can whether you? it's not. Can you, can't you, right? Yeah. So we're going to look also at the, the, on the other side, the police surveillance side, right? Do you want to have cops using drones? Right? Do you want to have Amazon delivering beer to your door? Well, if it's your door, yes. <laughs> yes. If it's your neighbor's door, probably not. <laughs> right. So we're going to try to talk about that. You mentioned the shotgun. What's up with the shotgun deal here? So there was a guy's name's William. I'm going to get his last name right. I want to say Meredith, but it's not. Okay. It's Merid- Meridity. That's his last name. So he's a Kentucky guy. Mm-hmm. His neighbor flies a drone, he claims, uh-huh. over top of the fence separating their two yards into his yard and hovers. Nice. What was it doing? Well, apparently, Mr. Meridity's 16-year-old daughter is sunbathing in her bikini in the backyard. Aha, uh-huh. so, so he, assumed, he has a minor daughter there Yes, yeah, so he bikini. assumes that this drone is taking photographs or video of his daughter. Probably accurately so. Right? Probably, right? yeah. So he runs inside, grabs a shotgun, and blasts the Thank drone. Thank God for Kentucky. I know. You got the shotgun ready to go yeah. right there? Go ahead. So he blasts the thing out of the sky, and... Neighbors come over, four guys confront him and go, hey, are you the guy that shot our drone down? He said, yes, I am. And so they begin approaching him. Well, he had a Glock on his hip. Uh-huh. And he says, I wouldn't do that if that's I were for, you. For those of you who aren't gun lovers, that's a pistol. That's a pistol. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cops are called. They arrest him. Nice. And they charged him. Hold on. Let me get this right. They charged him with. Let me guess. Reckless endangerment, discharge of firearm. Wanton endangerment ah, and criminal okay. mischief. Oh, well, it's Kentucky. Over here, that's what they've been charged with. Okay. Right? Yeah. Wow. Well, goes to court. Uh-huh. Gets dismissed. America's still a country. Love huh? it. It gets dismissed. Right well, this just wasn't one of these little $200 jobs that you uh-huh. can order off Amazon. This was a $1,500 drone. Probably those things that they call it a hexacopter. Yeah. They have five blades. You build it yourself. They're real expensive. So this guy now sells T-shirts. He has a website. He sells T-shirts. Who, sells the guy who shot him? Yeah, the guy who shot it down. Nice. And he sells T-shirts, a drone slayer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's good. There you Actually, go. Actually, I wanted to buy a T-shirt after I read the article. Well, I mean, it's interesting. You think about um, you know, somebody riding a loud motorcycle past your property, back and forth, back and forth, and then they actually drive onto your property. Well, can you stop them from doing that? Sure. Uh, but what about when they're going over? Suppose you put a, a ramp, a jump, and now they're jumping over your property, right? Mm-hmm. You've got a narrow strip. You've got, say, a lot of uh, 10,000 square foot lot. Mm-hmm. They're jumping over your property. Yeah. Should you be able to shoot them out of the sky? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Here we're coming right for us, <laughs> Judge. Right? Yeah, so now there's a huge debate about... Uh-huh. Where does your property boundary end as a when it goes up into the sky? Well, I because can... there the FAA has waded into this uh-huh. debate and said, "Hey, all of you people who own drones, uh-huh. you have to register them." And so now I think there's 180 or 190 thousand drones that have been registered with the FAA because now they regulate them. So hold on, think about the parallel here. We want to register drones so that we can regulate them, so that we can stop people from. You know, using them illegally, we want to know where they are, what they're doing. But the key to that is registration. Think about the word registration in the context of guns, right? Why do we want to register guns? Oh, to do nothing. To regulate, to control, right? Just to know where they are. To stop, right? To be able to legislate. That's the whole registration. You know, that's that's all what it comes from. You can take the same issue. But this isn't the only case. Actually, it's happened in Oklahoma where uh, same same deal where this guy was flying a drone over his neighbor's house. And the guy pulled out a gun, shot it. The neighbor comes over and goes... (laughs) <laughs> did you just shoot it? He goes, yeah, did we get it? All right. <laughs> did I hit it? Yeah. Because that would be so, a miracle in and of itself. Right. So, uh, And apparently it was a miracle because it was beyond 150 feet. And the guy used a shotgun to shoot down the drone. And so the neighbor was impressed by the marksmanship ability. And so he, the neighbor wrote a, an email and he said, it was nice to meet you and your son. I wish it could have been under different, different circumstances, but I have to give credit to the McBay School of Marksmanship. The last guy's name was McBay. Um, still, I'm pretty bummed to know that there was buckshot in my direction, and it was expensive parts. We please pay for it. The guy said no, and so how expensive was it? Did they say? Uh, well, it was 700 bucks to replace the components. Okay. And uh, so the neighbor who got his the the drone owner 
took the drone to court uh, and t- took the uh, the case to small claims court, and the judge said, "Sorry, you got to pay for the damage to property," because the judge said it was just quote reckless. That's all there was. Yeah. No, other, no, other, no other issue. But shooting the drone down in 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 Oklahoma will lead you to having to pay the property. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and drones are they're everywhere now. Oh, about two days ago, we're I'm out in my yard playing with my kids. Right, and so we live up on the Brewster Flats, and I hear this. Bzzz. What I, I think it's just a bunch of bees because there's bees everywhere around our house because right. the orchards. You right. know, they're all right. over in the orchards right now. And so my five year old goes, "Look right there!" And I look up, and about the time I saw what it was, he goes, "It's a drone." Oh no! And I looked at him, I'm like, "How do you know what <laughs> he's a dr- five? He's five. I go, yeah. "How do you know what yeah. a drone is?" Yeah. He, and he actually has seen your drone sitting ah. on the uh, desk at your house. So he right. knew what one was. Uh-huh. But this was a really big drone, and it was flying fast. Really? And I hadn't seen one around there before, but I, I, don't, I don't know who how, was he. How high up off the ground was it? I have no idea. Probably a couple hundred feet. Okay. And it wasn't over my property. It was actually over the orchard that's next to our property. Right, right. And so then they were flying up and down Pioneer Road, and you could see it. But, I mean, they were going fast and flying yeah. really high. Uh, who knows who it was, but it was the first time I've seen it. Yeah, and that's, that's an interesting issue. So Oklahoma, in response to this neighbor who actually shot down the, uh, the drone and then had to pay for it, they actually passed a bill, or they're trying to pass a bill. It's still actually still there. And it's called Landowners Defending Their Airspace. They are immune from civil liability for killing a trespassing drone. Right, killing a drone. Yeah, so a drone is 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 included to define uh, anything that is carrying a recording device. So if it just shows around, it's just if it's just flying around, can't shoot it. If it has a video, you can. Oh, so you better get your binoculars. You out. better get your binoculars. <laughs> See what right. it has a recording device on it. Is this a two point buck? It. Is this three point buck? No What's kidding. the deal here? All no right, right. kidding. So uh, so so in Oklahoma, you actually could shoot first and ask questions later. That's awesome. <laughs> but the same bill, actually, in California, they were trying to pass the same bill, and it failed. It was, a, it was slightly different, but it was in, in California. The question was whether or not you have an airspace. So they tried to say you had an, a, a privacy claim to your airspace above your place. Mm-hmm. I mean, how do you feel about, not me, because obviously I do this already, but um, me sitting there and spying in on your wife, right? I, she's my sister, so I spy on her all the time. <laughs> what are you doing? Why aren't you doing it? Wear your shoes on your feet, <laughs> right? All that stuff. But having somebody else spy on your, or, or just watch, just observe you at your own home mm-hmm. as you're playing in the backyard, nice picnic, family there. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, this, and you know, it's how, a mo- how do you feel? Oh, I don't want people looking at my stuff. Why? I don't want people hovering over my house. It's, it's public, you know, you can fly over the airplane, right? Check it out. They can talk to my attorney after I shoot their drone <laughs> shoot, down. Right? How about the airplane, right? How about a, heli- how about a helicopter? Actually, how our about- neighbor, actually, our neighbor has uh, remote control airplanes. He's actually a really good flyer. He mm-hmm. flies them over our house and stuff mm-hmm. quite frequently. It doesn't bother me at all. But, I mean, he's not hovering over top of our house, that's- 20 feet off our backyard, videoing us when yeah, we're up there. You know, that's, it's different. I, that's probably the, the issue is you can, you can use a drone to hover. And in Seattle, there was a gal in the 26th story, and she looked out her window, and, you know, what do you do when you live in downtown Seattle? I mean, I live downtown Seattle. What floor? I don't remember what floor I was on. I it's 20, somewhere in there. I don't know what it was. But, um, and if, you know, you know, routinely, what do you do? Well, you don't wear clothes because you want to show off to all the people down on the other side, like a couple miles away. We, right? all, we all don't do that, but yeah, go ahead. Right, right. But if I would have seen a drone there, I would have been like, whoa, whoa, I'm going to be exposed in not the manner that I want to be exposed, right? And so you want to, you, know, you don't want to feel like you have Come to. Come on, the rule. I mean, close the blinds. How hard is it? You're in the city. I mean, that's <laughs> part of that's just part of being a public service. You know, <laughs> working late at night. That's you know? part of entertaining the neighbors. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. They're like, ah, oh, horrible. Yeah. Who is this guy? I don't even know. But it's amazing to me how technology will change the definition of property rights. This isn't the first time this debate's ever happened, right? Because from what I've read, they're used to all of our property rights were from a British, uh, original British law, I can't remember the name of it, that said you basically, your little plot of land, Mm -hmm. you own it to heaven and to hell. Yes. Everything below it and everything above it. And that was how how it was for hundreds of years. Then all of a sudden they invented airplanes. Right. And people were going, hey, they're flying on our stuff, so they had to change it. Yeah, one one step in between that was when people realized that oil fields and coal mines actually could be on somebody else's property. Mm-hmm. And so rather than let the person who just happened to have the coal or oil directly beneath them, uh, whoever gets to it first gets it. And so you got people who drill sideways, you know, 100 miles sideways and underneath somebody else's property to get it. So, and so when it comes to the, 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 the lower property rights, right, they realize, hey, there's a change. So same thing with 
you know, with, with vertical rights. They do have the right to the airspace above your place. Well, ki- kind of. It depends. Mm-hmm. Generally, not really, right? Well, there have been states that have said, fine, the feds haven't been able to touch us because the FAA has said, we regulate and control the airspace. We don't own it. They won't uh-huh. say that they own it. But the, So now states are coming out and passing their own laws saying, you actually have a right to this X number of feet above your property. Mm-hmm. For instance, I think in Oregon, it's 400 feet. Uh-huh. So if you ha- are you flying a drone, your neighbor flies a drone onto your property below 400 feet, they can get in trouble for that. Yeah. But if it's above, it's at 500 feet, you don't own it. They, you can't stop them from doing it. And I think the assumption there is that, like, well, how detailed can their camera get? If they're at 400 feet just hovering, well, you, we all know that pretty your camera's detailed. getting pretty, pretty darn detailed, right? <laughs> yeah. And you know, and, and so that's and that's a that's a weird something. I mean, here's some of the dangers of drones that's going on. I mean, on April 22nd, I, did you know that there was a drone that landed on the roof of the Japanese Prime Minister's office in Tokyo with nuclear reactive sand, radioactive sand? No. And dropped off a bunch of sand. Dropped some sand? No, I didn't hear about right. this. Right. There have been over a dozen French nuclear plants that are that have been buzzed by these drones, right? Mm-hmm. There have been in January of last year there was one that crashed in the White House lawn. In February and March, uh, there there were a bunch of drones that were seen buzzing and hovering over the Eiffel Tower and other Parisian landmarks. Mm-hmm. Uh, there uh, and so there are a number of 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 serious concerns about oh my gosh what about these terrorists. Yeah. What, what are they going to do with this stuff? Well, and then there's some practical things, too, because do you remember the wildfires down in California? Yep. And they had the drones. People had their drones up over videoing the fires. Fantastic. And they had to ground the helicopters. They were trying to put water on it because there were so many drones, and they were afraid they were going to run into them. And you know, they, yeah. And, if, and by the way, if you happen to know who that is, who was doing that, you can get $75,000. Yeah, for the, yeah, that was interfering with the aircraft, right? Yeah, they were interfering with okay, the helicopters yes, yes. that were dropping water. Yes, yeah, so... I, I mean, that, and that's it's, some, it's an interesting for the Carlton Complex fire and the fire of last year. What what was that even called? Firestorm of Hell. I don't and know. They call, I think they called it, call it the Okanagan Complex fire, which was the one that was up here. I don't okay, know. What, I don't right. remember what they called the Chelan. Right. So we were talking about man. Wouldn't it be great to have live eyes? On, you know, eyes on the site for these mountain fires because we we clearly don't have enough. Uh, you know enough uh, aircraft to be able to see what's going on to relay that information back down to the local firefighters. In fact, before I bought the fire truck, I was looking at buying a drone to do that same thing to mm-hmm. actually to film and live stream down to give it to local firefighters. Mm-hmm. Didn't actually occur to me that that would be interfering with aircraft. I mean, I think if I thought for more than five seconds, <laughs> I probably would have come up. Don't let it get in the way of your ideas. Right. That's what I thought. I immediately dismissed it. And said, Let's go get a fire truck. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I was immediately grades. supportive. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So there, I mean, there are obviously there's beneficial uses, but you know we have this technology that could be. I mean, how do we control this stuff? I don't know. Well, I mean, well the problem is the problem is is if you ha- in order you have to start about where are property rights? Where do property rights end? Okay. Like where do the rights of your property begin up in the sky? Where does that where's that definition? Right. Because if you don't have one, how are you going to enforce anything? So the Supreme Court they have here's here's how they analyze this. What is a search? So remember, the government, as opposed to every other country, the, our, our government here is limiting the government's role, not giving you rights. Mm-hmm. So when we talk about, you know, w- does the government have a right to be able to surveil you with drones? They begin with, what is a search? So, for, ex- for example, a search is when cops come in your house and they search your home. That's a search. Well, what about if they just peek over the fence? They look into the fence. Is that a search? Supreme Court has said there's a, there's a doctrine called the curtilage, Right. That it, they've said, well, that's not like going on somebody's porch, so that's that's probably okay because that's the open field doctrine, right? So, but if they walk, what if they walk up on your porch and kind of walk around the house? Does that seem right? Should they be able to search, search that way? No, they're on walk your property. Your fence. Okay, they they can uh, they cannot do that. That's a curtilage, right? They have yeah. to get a search warrant. Yeah. But what if they stand on the other side of the fence and use a thermal in- imaging scan? Now they can see through the home, see you buck naked, see what's going on, and aha, look what they're doing in there. They're growing, fill in the blank, or, or they're whatever. Mm-hmm. Should that be a search? I think absolutely it should. Okay, here's what's bizarre about our system. Today, that is a search. Yeah. A year from now, it won't be a search. So there was a case where uh, the, the government used thermal imaging. That, the way that works is you can see people through the walls. Mm-hmm. You can see them without clothes, see their heat signatures, depending mm-hmm. on the resolution. It's like the backscatter Do you remember, do you remember the movie Navy Seals? 
Do you remember that old movie? Yes, they with shoot Charlie the guy Sheen. The wall. They I shoot mean, the guy through the wall. That was the first time I've ever seen Thermal. That what? is an awesome movie. Right. And so now you can get that app on your cell phone. <laughs> I mean, that is awesome. Well, right. Well, yeah. welcome to technology. Okay. So the Supreme Court said, it said, well, look, you know, this actually was a search. You shouldn't have been able to see they're doing drugs through their home without getting a search warrant. That invades their privacy. And because again, what about uh, what about all the times that people get their homes searched and they're completely innocent of a crime? Mm-hmm. That's the reason why we want to require warrants. So the cops don't just come and say, hey, I'm going to check your place out. What do you got? That is not America, right? Mm-hmm. That's Gestapoville. <laughs> so the thermal in- imaging, what they said was this is only requires a warrant because this is new technology. Ergo, therefore, once it becomes old technology, they can do thermal scans of your home. They can see through walls. They can cre- they can literally see you through your through your clothes. What in the world? Who would have thought? Would you have thought you're gonna you could you'd be buck naked in front of the t- TSA? No. Like no. Ten years ago? No. Five years ago? No, absolutely like, no. Who would submit to that? No, nobody we do would. It all the time now. Yeah. Don't even think about it. Right. It's just part of the routine. Part of the routine. TSA, by the way, they are not a law enforcement agency. They have no authority. They do not have badges. They do not have guns. They pretend they are a private, right? They're they're a private agency. They're just like the EPA. Okay? Yeah. They are not a police force. Whenever there is a problem, they call police officers. Right? Those are the guys. But they pretend like they're law enforcement. They're not. Don't let them tell you they are. Okay. Mm. No. Back to the story. Sorry, I don't answer questions. Go ahead. <laughs> right. right. But what we look at, what is our, our notions of what is reasonable mm. and what is private is evolving and devolving in light of the increase of technology. Mm. The ability to see through your clothes. And we're like, that's fine. No problem. Here, go ahead, Grandma. Go ahead. <laughs> Here's my little kid. No problem. Oh, we blur out the images. Oh, sure you do. Just how you don't spy on our cell phones. <laughs> Just how you don't record those. Just like you haven't recorded every cell phone conversation for the last decade. Right. So for those of you who are just tuning in uh, and you don't realize that the, the, the NSA has been recording our calls, and we had to do a show of this, they've been recording every single phone call for the past at least, at least the past six years. And every, we didn't know about it until Edward Snowden right, came out right, and right. said, surprise! Right. So for those of you who are thinking, oh my gosh, you the conspiracy theories, read a book, right? It's, it's called <laughs> Read a Supreme Court Opinion, right? It, so it, it has happened, it does happen, and so these are, this is not conspiracy, this is, this is science, this is not conspiracy science. Yeah, and you know, I think that one of the things I was thinking about was like, what do you do? Let's say that you're sitting in your backyard having a barbecue, mm-hmm. and you see a drone come over your backyard, and it's hovering 50 feet above your lawn <laughs> video. With a camera. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Oh, it depends. I mean, I would be afraid of, number one, it depends on where you are. If you're inside the city limits, don't think about shooting a I drone. I mean, luckily, right? my very rational wife would be there, and she would say, She'd say no. you're an idiot. Don't shoot it down. <laughs> say, I'm gonna I'd get, say, fine. I'll, I'll get a slingshot and shoot beer at it. <laughs> Right? Beer cans. That could be pretty lethal. Yeah. Right? Give but, my kids some rocks. Right, so throw. If you're, right. If you're inside of, inside of the city limits, obviously, if you discharge a firearm, where does a bullet land? Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was in Jordan, I went to a wedding. Jordan, as in Middle East Jordan. I went to a wedding, mm-hmm. and there are all these Bedouins out there, and they were celebrating. Woo! Woo! And they're all shooting their really old, crappy uh, Russian AK-47. Kalashnikov. Up in the air. Boom, boom. Everyone sh- I was like, what in where these bullets, bullets come down? They don't go to space, guys. <laughs> so what in the world? <laughs> so like that's you know, that's that's like hey, it's a safety point. If you're gonna have a family reunion, don't shoot guns up in the air. Right? So like Unless you're duck hunting. Yeah. So that's why people say, Well, then I'll use a shotgun, no problem. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that some of the core cases I read about was if if you did this the first time that this happened and you didn't report it, you didn't have any sort of information, you're gonna get in trouble if you shoot that thing down. Uh-huh. But if it's a repeated offense, you have information to back up, you have video, you have other witnesses to verify that this mm-hmm. thing was surveilling your house, Yeah, um, that's how this uh, William Merity got off. He had other people there that saw what it was doing, and they testified and said, this is what the ju- judge goes, ah, he's perfectly fine, he can shoot it down. Yeah, it was interesting, I read about that case, and uh, what was interesting about that is the judge relied more on eyewitness testimony than GPS testimony. Yeah, because they had GPS uh, coordinates of where the... They said, they said, hey, look at our GPS judge. We never crossed over the property boundary. And, and the judge is like, I don't care what your GPS says. Uh, I'm going to believe what eyewitness testimony says. Yeah. And so think about that bef- you know, where you know, we still rely on eyewitness over technology in a lot of cases, even though we know that eyewitnesses 
can be completely mistaken. And are a lot. Right. You know, they send people to jail <laughs> accidentally for 18 years yeah. saying this guy raped me. Turned out that it was like, oh, well, DNA said it wasn't. It was this guy. They're like, wow, they look real similar. They both had eyes. That Seattle guy just got off. Did you read about this case? No. Uh, there was some place in the Midwest and a, and a young girl uh, disappeared. And I believe that they found, they found her dead somewhere. Well, they blamed... They oh, blamed. Yeah, they arrested him way later, like yeah, I mean, 40 years later. Well, no, yeah, it was, the, it was back in the 50s, and mm-hmm. I think they just arrested him like in 2012 or right. something. Right, and he Crazy. went to prison, right? He went to prison. He was yeah. going to prison for life. And he's like, what? Who's, what? And apparently he had, they finally, some. they got a new prosecuting attorney who took the case back up and said, actually, he was like 50 miles away yeah. during this, and it was, a really, it was a really good alibi, so they let him out, and he just got out like last yeah. week. So you have, I mean, that, that's the vagaries, though, of any system. It's like a self-defense case. If you're going to yeah. say, oh, Oh, somebody comes on property, I'm going to shoot him. Well, hold on a second. Do you realize you can't just walk? It's not open season on people who wander on your property, right? I mean, when I was in first year... It would be an interesting <laughs> world if it were. <laughs> it would be. When I was in my first year of law school, uh, we were going through this, tor- this class called torts. And we're talking about how a pedestrian's obligations you know, to, to ob- obey traffic lights... To, to not jaywalk, to, you know, to use crosswalks. And we started talking about, you know, what would you do? And, and the professor was asking this girl, going on and on, you know, following down the primrose path, and she did not understand where he was going. And he got to the question where, well, so if they're in the crosswalk, what do you do? She goes, well... They just assume the risk. <laughs> He's like, so it's open that is, season. That is awesome. <laughs> Knock him over. Hey, head on a swivel. There's cars in the road. <laughs> I know. <Watch> out. <laughs> right. So it's the same thing. You're like, what in the world? You know, with with if you're going to go and attack a drone, uh, you should be a little more careful. Like for example, there's a company called Drone Shield in Washington D.C. What they do is they actually have a sophisticated uh, sonic device where they listen to, uh, they basically can pinpoint where the drone is. They makes a library of noises. They ping and say, here's the drone. That's what it is. Did you know there are cities now, uh, as for a police force, they have listening mics all around the cities, right? D.C. There, has this, right? Certain cities, right? Yeah. And what they do is they identify the location of a gunshot. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, gunshots rico- ricochet. But the, the, the other side is, well, that's great, but there's listening devices in the streets that the government's recording everything at all times. Yeah, George Orwell would be really proud of that. Yeah. So you're like, wow, that's a really good cause, but wow, what about the rest of us non-criminals? Mm-hmm. Or non, a non-victim, in other words, right? Mm-hmm. Another, go, I was going to talk about, have you heard of this geofencing technology? No, how does it work? Yeah, so how, oh, wait a minute. Yes, I have. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah, so you can actually install software on your drone. Uh-huh. And so all of these areas that are no-fly zones, you can't be in this area, you can't fly. Yeah. It embeds it in the GPS of the drone, so your drone is incapable of flying into those areas, so you won't violate it. Nice. And so there's lots of areas that you... I mean, if, for instance... If the president's in Seattle, <laughs> yeah. you can't fly over anywhere near him. Remember the guy a couple years ago who was flying the little puddle jumper? Yes. It was a float plane into yes. Lake Washington, and they scrambled fighter jets out Good. of... Yeah, there were sonic booms going across the skyscrapers yes, of I Seattle. Yes, I remember that. That was so awesome. I'm, I'm going to show you... Um, I'm, He's breaking a map out. I am. This is called... This is the Seattle sectional, uh, sectional here. And this describes all the different airspaces that are over SeaTac. And uh, and Spokane and uh, so I'm going to hand this over to Cody real quick. This is this is this is what we should make, in my opinion, what we should make drone pilots understand. Okay. Okay. In the middle of that of that here, you'll see that's that's actually you can see that SeaTac. So the big the big circle is SeaTac. Right. Okay. And so you're going to see all there's different levels of airspace there. Mm-hmm. So we, we hear people talking about well above 500 feet, below 500 feet. So there's there's classification of airspace around here. All of our airspace is Gulf airspace. That's so that's G airspace, and so that has to do with like hey it's unrestricted. You can do whatever you want to do. Just you know don't damage you know property, life, or limb. Then we'll go up a little bit higher to Echo airspace. Right? I'm guarantee. I'm guarantee. I'm looking at this. I can't make heads or tails of this. I can't even hardly tell it's Seattle for right. Crying but out you loud. can see as you get in there, you can see there's like a, like a purple uh, there's like a purple fuzzy it's boundary. Really pur- pretty purple. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're saying like hey watch out now you're coming into Charlie controlled airspace. So now you have to you have to radio you have to you know let an air traffic control know there's a transponder. Yeah. You have to, again, you're going to go into Bravo airspace as soon as you come right in to SeaTac to land. Mm-hmm. You got to be like, hey, you know, Seattle Tower, this helicopter 90307 inbound for 25. And they'll say, hold one. Did you have information? Whiskey. And they'll say, I'm a pilot, by the way. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but then you'll hold and you say, yeah, you know, so before you go in the airspace, you got to check and see, you know, what, what are the, the airspace control 
uh, that is happening for that time and that place. Mm -hmm. And it's your job as the pilot to know what it is. Mm -hmm. So they will call back to you and say, you have information whiskey. See, I have information whiskey. And then you repeat back about what you can, you know, what altitude you can fly, what flight path, right? What is the vector you're supposed to be on, right? And, and what speed? They'll repeat it back to you, you repeat it back to them, and then you sign out. And that's what you go. So it's complicated. Um, and I, I can say without a doubt, if you're a pilot, categorically, you are not an idiot. You're not an idiot. You might be a drunk, but you're not an idiot. <laughs> right? You and might so, be a substance abuser. Right? But you might be, right. Because this is very complicated stuff. Yeah. When I was studying to become a helicopter pilot, I was like, whoa, if I don't know how hard this was, I would not have done this. No, I remember you trying to <laughs> memorize. It had a map of an airport landing strip and all of the different ways you could come into it. I remember mm -hmm. looking at that going... That is a mess. Yeah. How can you make heads or tails of that? Uh, yes, I know. Right. But what you do is you could regulate drone f uh, uh, pilots to make them comply with regular pilot certification. You don't comply, you don't fly. That'd be the new t-shirt. I just made it up. Well, look at you being the fun police. Right? <laughs> All these people who own drones are going to be buzzing hey, your house. Well, that's okay. You know, we'll just regulate, regulate, regulate. Welcome yeah. to the future. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's a guy named Sam Kamkar. Uh, he was the guy who hacked MySpace, and, and within 20 hours of his uh, worm that was attached, attacked, it had inserted the text, quote, but most of all, Sammy's my hero, into more than a million people's uh, MySpace pages. This is actually when MySpace just began to crash, because he hacked everything. Mm -hmm. So he came up with a, a company called Skyjack, and what it does is it finds a, it's a zombie drone that flies around looking for drones, hacks into their control system, and then makes them follow them, follow that drone. That is awesome. So actually. you go to a party, you know, like a, you know, a big stadium, people are flying drones, you fly your zombie drone, you catch all their drones, land back into your rig, you drive off. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you got them. Welcome America. <laughs> a little conga line of drones yeah. going through the sky. <laughs> <I> know, right? <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, so there, there are, there, actually there's bazookas you can look up where they actually will shoot at a, uh, a giant... Uh, electromagnetic pulse, an EMP at the drone device, it will bring it straight down to the ground. And as long as you're pointed at the device, it will stop. So, but those things, really, you can spend like 2,500 bucks. So you better be really interested in being a killjoy or you've got a freaky neighbor. Yeah, I guess it depends on what you dislike your neighbor because it might be worth it if your if you talk to your neighbor several times and you're like, hey, dude, stop I just stop my kids. flying over my house and my kids are out in their swim trunks playing in the backyard. Yeah, I, it's I, not that hard. Stop doing it. Well, it was like we went to uh, – we're driving over the pass, and I, my daughter at the time, we we're, we we're trying to teach her how to, how to uh, potty train. So we had one of those Man, little I potty training chairs. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, we have to stop, and they sit on the chair, and they cry, and they're outside, and you're standing beside the road. Well, we happened to stop near where there was a, um, a coffee shop, a coffee stand, where apparently people stop all the time there to go to the bathroom, and they yell at them, right? They yell all the time, Don't go use our bathroom. It's customers only. I'm like, well, I would have been a customer until you yelled at me. So You're we're like, she's not using your bathroom. She's using the back of the Suburban. Right. So yeah. we're, we're probably like mm, 200 feet away from the coffee stand. And you know, we're, I'm sitting down there. My kid's on the potty chair. And uh, I look over, and this woman's got a camera. She's taking pictures of my daughter on the potty chair. And so I will... So first of all, I'm I'm literally ready to burn the place down at this point. <laughs> I I'm ready. I didn't, I, you know, at that you know at that time, I just by happenstance I was was fortunate enough that I didn't have my gun with me because I would have been like, I thought this person was was literally filming my kid naked, you know. So I walk up, I confront her, um, and demand that she turn over the camera and why is she filming my kid, and then she becomes, you guys are littering, you guys, you people here, just peeing, blah, blah. you know. I was like, what? What are you talking? And I realized when she's talking that a she had had a head injury, not literally, but she was just she was just a dumb person. And she's just usually she films people, then she calls the police. And I said, did you realize you're filming my my daughter with no clothes? You realize that you're filming that. Are you a pedophile? Are you a child molester? Do you always like little kids? I'm asking like this or so. Mm -hmm. So so give me your camera right now. I'm gonna take it off your hand. I want you to film the ground. Or so, Merry Christmas. Here's a felony. Right. Here's a felony. I said, I'm going to call the police. So yeah. I had her. Um, I did. I actually called the police. I, I reported her as that she was surveilling my kid. I gave her her description. I took a picture of her after I made her actually empty her camera. I was, and because I didn't know what in the world she was doing, I said, hey, I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she said is true, but I'd like for you to have a conversation with her. Here's my name and phone number. I'm really concerned about what's going on here. And so they're like, wow, that was a really detailed report. I said, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Stop filming my kids. <laughs> So, but what do you do when someone does this with your with your um, your with a drone? 
what would you do now? Now after our conversation, what would you do? In what, in what instance? They're showing up and your kids are playing. Uh, they have no clothes. They're running around and there's the, the filming's going on. What, what do you do? Is this the first time this has happened or is this multiple times? First time you see this thing showing up. It shows up, there's a camera, there's a drone there. I think probably what I would do is say, kids, get in the get house, inside. call the cops and say, come check this out. There's some drone filming my kids right. and there's some chunks in the backyard. Right. That'd so probably then, be what I'd do with the first time. That's right. And the second time, of course, you'd film it. You'd try to figure out, you'd search on the internet to see how do you bring these things down. You ask the cops, hey, can I blow that thing out of the sky next time it comes back? Right. You ask them that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. And, you know, but there comes a point when somebody is literally is is surveilling your children or yourself or your wife, whatever, and becomes unlawful. Don't shoot first and ask questions later. We're not Oklahoma. You can't do that, right? That's not legal. You're, right? an, you're an attorney. You should tell them to shoot that thing down and be like, come see me. <laughs> come see me. Here you go. <laughs> Brick thrown through your window. Come see Al's glass. Yeah. <laughs> right. No. <laughs> so, New clients. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. You just, you, you should, you make sure you record that, you record the drone first, right? Mm -hmm. I would, I definitely would call the police. The police are important to make a record of what's going on with, with other activity. Yeah. As technology changes, our, the ability to be invaded by other private citizens is just going through the roof. Mm -hmm. Thermal imaging is an example. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the first step obviously has to be the police because it's not worth blowing a $200 drone Dumb. Yeah. out of the sky. Yeah. And then it's going to cost you how much money to get out. No. And the hassle. It's right. just not worth it. Yeah. There's, there's a nuisance value. And I had a client one time in Seattle that he walked around and he goes, you know what? We're, we're sitting down, we we're having lunch in the Columbia Tower, and this guy goes, he goes, you know, I could make every single person in here pay me $50,000. I said, why? He goes, that's a nuisance value for people who are, who are in this building to make a lawsuit go away, 50 grand. And I'm like, what, what kind of world do you live in, right? But his point was that he had been sued by somebody that was a completely fraudulent claim, and he paid him 50 grand to make him walk. Over here, the nuisance value of a case is probably five thousand. Hmm. So that's you know right around the value where you could sue anybody for anything, and they probably would just pay you five grand to make you go away, unless it becomes personal. So if you shoot down a drone, you're going to pay a minimum of ten thousand for an attorney's fees defending that. It hmm. ain't worth it. Mm -hmm. So film it, call the police, right, and start just talking to your city council people and be like, hey, we got to we got to establish rules here. Report on the FAA. That's the final thing you can do. You can call the FAA. They regulate drones and, and say, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what they did. They will, the FAA eventually will come and do something. I don't know what it'll be, but it'll be something. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, you know, everything goes wrong. You can pull Call of Duty on them. Do you remember? I, we used to play Call of oh, Duty. Oh, I love Call of Duty. Gosh, I love that. And you're always in the building, and the helicopters are out circling. Uh -huh. And so you run out of the hallway, and you rip an <laughs> RPG at them, and then <laughs> you run back in. Run back in. <laughs> right. So right. if all else fails, just do that. There you go. So as we, uh, we watch the drone saga, and as technology continues to go, we will be paying more and more attention to how it changes, how the law changes. We'll keep you updated, because this is Legal Tender. See ya. See ya.